Yes, hello, welcome back to the IX series. It's me, Dr. Benji FM, and as we start this episode, it just occurred to me, the door is open. So if anyone walks in, let me know, won't you? Uh, just so we can accost them. I'll, I'll, I'll sort them out with... I've really not got any weapons available, so I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I've just asked on Twitter, actually, it's up for some questions. Um, in, in episode... Look, if, you, if you've got a question, ask questions. Comment section. Go big or go home. I will say, actually, in last episode, lots of people were saying, you're just a bit unlucky, aren't you, Ben? Which I thought, yes, yes, I am. It's, it was an unfortunate scenario for us uh, in our last two games. And in our last two games, we've played a 1-0 win against Astra, in which we were very dominant against them and deserved the win. I just think they're not that good, really. Mantari got himself sent off in a, game, a European game, because of course he did. So we'll miss today's game against Braga. Uh, and then another 2-0 win over Roda. And again, Mantari starts and plays well. 7.3. I think the balance of our midfield is so important to have a, a box, to, like, not a box to box, but a ball winning midfielder in the centre next to Van der Beek, allowing the creative players to create, but having someone like centrally that just stops things. And uh, he's really, really good at that. So hopefully that continues today as he plays in this first league game. And the team... It, it's had a little change. Veltman's coming on that right-hand side and done a decent job in the last two games. So he's going to keep his place. Delet and Vobat are in the centre. Uh, Dix on the left-hand side. We've got Adana, of course, in goal. Uh, David Neres plays on the right-hand side as the inside forward. Kluivert, after his goal in the last episode, which was surprising. Zayek in behind Dolberg. And I think it's a pretty strong team. We've obviously got options to rotate. And we've got a game in Europe coming up that hopefully shouldn't really decide too much, actually, if we take a look at it. I'm not sure how Braga got on. The winner of it, then, actually, actually oh, decides a lot. The winner of it tops the group. And that could be really important when avoiding some of the big dogs in the Europa League. So, first things first though, let's get into our uh, league game. We're playing FC20, of course, under Steve McLaren, won the league. Uh, how many years ago is that now? 2009-10, it feels like a lot. I don't know if it feels longer or not, that, that's probably about right, literally, because that is the date it happened. Um, and as mentioned, I've got some questions to the side of me uh, that we can answer throughout this as well. The first comes in from Dan Snelling, who said, what part of football manager makes you keep coming back? And I thought that was a good question, and it's interesting because, ordinarily, I like saves with some distance to them. I think the more you get into a save, like my favourite time to manage a save in football manager isn't the first couple of seasons. It never is. People often say that like getting into a save and then having real players and transferring those players is the best bit. For me, it's when regens start to become a pivotal part of the game. And um, at that point, then I can get really sort of into it. And I like the fact that you can create a story based on just what's happening within your own save. And I, I like... I like the, I guess, part of it for me. And I've, I've talked about this before, that football manager wants to go in sort of the eSports direction. And I, I don't want that because I think part of the thing that makes football manager great and it, and it probably provides some of the best moments for you guys watching, especially with me as well because of my sort of haphazard nature, is that there's that random element that you never really know what's going to happen. Even more so sometimes than real football where sometimes patterns are predictable. I guess, yeah, the game and, and football can sort of merge together in that. But yeah, I think it, it's... I like the RNG. I like the random number generator element of Football Manager, and I like that from game to game, you never know, you never quite know how you're going to finish a game. You never know. Like you go into every game thinking there's a chance we can win this. I feel like I go to every game like that. I could have a far lesser team, and I'd still go in and think if the boys play well, <laughs> then we've got a chance. And I think that's the thing that I like about Football Manager. I like the fact that I feel like I'm in control a little bit, but I'm not in control enough. It's different to FIFA in that regard, whereas in FIFA, I just think I'm going to take everybody down and I'm going to be in charge of every match where that never really happens. But that is what brings me back every year because I know I'm going to have more adventures, more journeys. And actually, like part of it as well, of course, is that the game I always think is better year on year. So that's part of it. Thank you for your question, though, Dan. I appreciate that. We're going to try and fire through. We've got quite a few questions, so I'm going to answer some of the best ones. Um Interesting question from Callum. He said, thoughts on Football Manager as a simulation of the real world sport and not a game. Now, I think the lines are blurring more and more with this. And I I think what Callum means by that is that this isn't a game anymore. And I, I think slowly and, and sort of almost timidly, uh, by the way, I'm aware there's a game going on behind. I just think 20 gives me an opportunity to talk about stuff. And these two games, well, I want to show you because I think they're important. If things happen, we'll talk about it. But we'll do some questions. So, yeah, the game is becoming very merged now into real life. And it's becoming less of a, a sort of a game and more of a simulator. And I don't know if I like that. And I, it sort of harks on to the question, the, the question I just answered that I, I like what we have right now. I like that it's a game, but I feel like every year they're trying to make it as if we're proper managers and I don't necessarily think that that's going to be as fun because I think some some aspects of being a manager 
we skip already. Like ordinarily, if you play the game and you want progression in the game, things like team, to- not team talk, sorry, things like press conferences are something you will kind of bypass. Social media, the, the tab that was involved with that, you will bypass. Training at the moment with the way it's set out, you kind of bypass. And for me, training is now the big next step that when training becomes improved, then we- people already feel this year there's a lot more to do and there's a lot more to focus on, sort of pre match briefings and everything like that. If you include training within that, then all of a sudden, there's a lot more to do. And at what point do we stop calling Football Manager a game and do we focus on Football Manager as a simulator? And that, that's going to be a really interesting topic um, as the game progresses. And it's going to be interesting to see from a development standpoint what we see it sort of move towards more. Because things like draft mode make you feel like you're playing a game. Whereas things like the depth that Football Manager goes to now you don't necessarily feel... Like, sometimes Football Manager is not fun, and I think any game should always end at a point that it's fun. And I, I hope we don't... I hope the line doesn't blur too much and we understand what we're playing is a game and it's not... Like, you want a life, you want a lifelike game. You want it to sort of replicate the experience, but at the same time, you want to, so you want to have fun with it. And while I'm sure there are people out there that have fun with a game because they play it to such a level, such a de- an in-depth level, that... They can do both, but for I think for a casual fan of a game, you want it to be a game. And I know I know personally friends that would be turned off by not treating it like if if it be, if it becomes too complicated and it becomes too serious. And that's a worry for me as someone that makes videos on it. So I have to try. I feel like it's my responsibility as, as a creator in the way that I do it, in the style that I do it, that I can keep it feeling nice and fun and and fresh and i think that's the that's the challenge for me as a creator and then for developers to, to keep that feeling throughout um so thank you for your question i asked for questions by the way that i could go a little bit beyond a yes or a no answer so if you, if you asked me a question that was a bit yes or no um then i've probably avoided it uh for has asked a question about dolberg for klopp's liverpool yes i would like to see that personally not that i think it will but i would like to see that as mentari from distance he loves to strike from distance as he plays it into cliver mentari's just got a He's got a bit of a hammer of a left foot. Clive up with an effort. My goodness gracious. Here's the bar. We know he likes a long-range goal. Um, that doesn't quite find its way in. I should say, with half an hour to go, we'll stop the questions briefly, and we're going to try and find a way to win this. What we're going to do is something we've done quite a few times. It's Dolberg out on the left-hand side. Benedetto's going to come in through the centre. I'm actually going to be shown on for Zayek uh, in the centre the as well. So we'll see. Little change around. Uh, keeping Dolberg on the pitch, but it's the red of 20 that come forward and wow a really good chance for them you think they'd do slightly better we are on standard we're away from home 20 minutes to go i think we're going to try and push for this <coughs> i'm so sorry i'm coughing all over the shop apparently as uh that was less than convincing from onana and it goes behind for a corner kick if they score the goal here we're going to be in all sorts of bother they're currently eighth in the league they've had a pretty average side uh, side an average time uh, so far this season and the kind of side that of course can cause problems to these bigger teams but I'm hoping we're not one of those teams as it's launched forward and Dolberg brings it forward and there's, there's a lot of us racing forward there when the bait loses out and um, the ball now goes through towards Asaidi of course former Liverpool player with a Liverpool based question great challenge by Delet and now Voltman on that right hand side to Davis Nero so we need these we need these forward players to start acting like what like wizards of this division and we're so far we're not really seeing it in this game although there could be a through ball on if we want to find it benedetto is constantly just sort of lurking on the last man it feels like we've lost out and a chance for them to turn and the through balls come through to asaidi who could cause us a problem he's given the he's given a bl- how many penalties do i concede like is it is it sort of i guess for on some part right he's playing as a win back it's bad positioning and then he stops him from having a clear chance on goal it's it's going to be a penalty though and well, it's all on Onana, isn't it? He either saves it and we have a chance of winning this game or we're fighting for a point. And the penalty comes in, smashes it into the back of the net and, well, that is somewhat disappointing. Feldman's not a natural at fullback, at wingback, sorry, but he'd been doing a pretty good job there. I'm going to sit him back a little bit deeper, which is sort of counterproductive to what we want. And, uh, yeah, decent penalty. And we're 1-0 down. And this is sort of a bit of a trend, really. Another away game where we seem to be massively struggling. I mean, is there a, is there a change on the pitch here that we should make? Um, Thunder Beak, yeah, Thunder Beak's going to come off. We're going to put Huntelaar up top with uh, with Benedetto as an advanced forward. And we're just going to see now if these, this two up top combination can find us a goal in the late stages. The experienced Huntelaar, can he save Ajax from the jaws of defeat here? It's not looking overly likely. We're attacking with a chance after chance. But we've not had a goal. Three half chances in the game for us. 
but only one clear cut quite clearly for this Ajax team. We've seen it throughout the save, really. isn't enough as the ball's played forward. They could be in again here. Uh, like, I, think, I feel like there's going to be another goal. I don't necessarily think it's going to be us that scores it, though. Asaidi, again, causing problems on that side. Um, we've got a nice press on him, but he shifts the ball quickly and we can't get near him. But we've won it back. And with not long to go, Benedetto is driving forward. Now, I've seen him do this before, and it never works out well. And once again, he's done it again, and it doesn't work out well. Not ideal. And with no time left, it's going to be a 1-0 defeat. And the curse of football manager this year continues for me. It's not been a good time. Again, we mentioned before, 20 former champions, but that is nearly 10 years ago. So we can't really act as if they're challengers this season, because they're really not. And there's a six-point gap. I'm looking at that now and thinking, what are we going to do with that? A six-point gap between ourselves, PSV, and Feyenoord. And, of course, this is a, this is essentially a journeyman save, right? I need to have good performances in this first season so we can attract teams from around Europe. And, it, and like, there could be an opportunity here that we're going to get sacked. So we've also got to be aware of that. Some big games coming up next episode. In fact, we play PSV. Um, I'm actually going to get aggressive and say I'm not happy with the result. How can I be? And I'm as disappointed. I mean, you can see the penalty. You can't say too much about it, can you? But uh, goalless Dolberg, 10 games. He started the season terrifically well. And then since then, wow, I, I did, I tell you what, I did not realise that it was quite as severe as that. Heavens above. Right then. Well, with that in mind, um, yeah, Vel Vel Velton made the error we saw. He just sort of, it was bad. It was really bad. Uh, and with that in mind, we're actually going to change our right back, go into this game in Europe. Uh, the experiment has failed. I think we could all agree with that. And uh, change-wise, do we want to mix this up a little bit? Shone's going to come back in. Neres is going to drop out again. Uh, we're not seeing enough from them. And in the middle, Sint Graven's going to play, make his way back into the centre. I think come January, we are definitely going to have to buy uh, like a proper young, hungry a, a ball winning midfielder in the centre. Because right now, it's just it's a problem. And a problem that isn't getting fixed very easily. Braga coming up in a week's time. Let's go to some more questions, shall we? Um... We had a few that are just sort of yes or no answers. Uh, and a few, if you have answered before, if you've watched Q&As of mine, then, and you feel like I've, I've not answered your question, if you go back and watch a few Q&As, you'll definitely, like, things like why I support Liverpool, things like that. Um, ever thought about doing a national team save? I think they're quite limited. I think if you're going to do that, you have to produce it in a certain way where it can be so much more than just a regular save. And I think if you stay tuned to me next year, I'll say this quietly to the people that watch this series, but stay tuned next year. There's a World Cup, so something in mind. Uh, what's the plan improving the squad in January? An actual question based on Ajax, uh, Marcus. Thank you for your question. Harry, thank you for the last question as well. Um, what's the plan with improving the squad? I guess the ball-winning midfielder is the, is the big thing for me. Um, if I can get an exciting winger. like We've got a lot of wingers, but not that many that I feel are winning games on their own. And I think that's a worry. Uh, getting more out of Dolberg is going to be important as well. A few issues there for us that need solving. Um, yeah, I think... The, that is the big one, the, the ball-winning midfielder in the centre. But thank you for your question, Marcus. Um, oh, Caleb, oh, Caleb. Is it, it's either Caleb or Caleb. I think it's probably Caleb. Um, do you think the FM YouTube community is lacking in any way, such as the number of creators or the amount of fans within the community? Well, I don't think the amount of fans is necessarily a problem, or viewers, as I always call you. Um, Anana wants to leave to join PSG. No, I don't. I don't. I've no intention of letting you go. I think we can achieve Champions League qualification. It's not going to matter if I don't do it by the end of the year because I'm going to leave. So it gives me a bit of leeway. It's kind of. It's interesting that I can, the dynamic of the save is quite interesting in that regard. Um, with the with the YouTube community, we have a lot of people that start and stop, and we have a lot of people that start when the game comes out, like now, and then slowly fade away, and then we see them again in August when they come back again. Um, but I wish we had more consistent and a lot more creators. I think that's the big thing. I've talked about it before, right? The number of people that do football manager videos. And you might only watch, like, you watching this now might only watch me. You might not be aware of other creators. Um, maybe maybe that's stylistically or you just weren't aware. Um, but we have that very similar number of creators that we did two years ago. And from a community standpoint, that for me is a problem. While everyone's grown a lot more, and there's, there's a lot more creators now sort of pushing over 5,000 subscribers and things like that, we don't have a lot more doing it, and I would love to see more and more people give it a go. Um, 
I, th- I honestly thought at this point we'd see more people of trans- transition from sort of FIFA as they- in the same way that like the, the Call of Duty community became the FIFA community. I thought we'd see a similar, like a, I mean it might still happen, right? But I thought we'd see more FIFA guys cross over and do some more football manager stuff and experiment with it a little bit, especially some of the career mode guys. And that hasn't really happened. We've seen one or two, we've seen Dot Landers do it occasionally and Chesnoid Gaming, Ches has done it a few times. Um, but we've not seen even those guys kind of do it as sort of like a like a halfway house kind of thing. And there's no disrespect to them. I just mean they're still very committed to FIFA is, what is the point I'm making. Um, and I think if we had more people making content, especially those kind of guys, then it would up the quality level across the board, including my own. And I, I think that would be really beneficial. So I think that's what we're lacking, pure numbers of people doing it. And I, but equally doing it consistently at a good level. And that's, that's in some way, that's a frustration. Um I mean, in many ways, it's a frustration, actually. Because I could talk about that for hours, but I'm not sure people who watch are that bothered. Uh, right, we're going to go into this next game against Braga. We're, we're sort of taking our time a little bit. I hope you don't mind. People say they quite like the podcasty episode, so we'll stick with that. Um, for those that wonder why does he look over there, that's where my other monitor is, hence I'm reading the questions. Um, oh, there's some interesting questions there. Uh, ben Hoskins has asked, how important do you think analytics are to the overall makeup of a team regarding getting the correct players and the correct system compared to the eye test and traditional values of scouting? Well, that's interesting. So, so essentially, it's like, uh, how much value to put, do you put to things like Opta and the stats that come through the game itself? Um, I think in, in real life, there's a lot more to be said, as as he, as he coins it, the, like the eye test and seeing a player and seeing what they can do. And there are things that you see within players that I think certainly managers pick up on that you won't necessarily see from a stat sheet. And I think there's a it's almost detrimental sometimes to like football opinion is that you can use a stat to kind of prove anything and i hate that about football because i don't think it should be that and occasionally i get i get drawn into that equally as much as anybody else uh quickly on this team by the way onana's gonna start in goal change it right back uh dykes vober and Delet. i'm not sure if we're gonna stick with them i think veltman in for Wover might be a good decision uh we're making a ball player as well at the back here uh midfield wise i'm not overly happy but with mentari not able to play I guess we'll stick with it. We could probably play Vergeva in there as sort of a, a ball winner. I don't know if he'd like it, but I think he would suit... Actually, I think he would suit it. Which might call... Which, I mean, he, we can do it as well as Van der Beek. Uh, sorry, Van der Beek. He can do it as well as Singraven. So I'm going to try it out. He's a bit more defensive-minded. He is a defender. So we'll see how it goes. He's not massively fit for the game, but we'll see how he gets on um, within this. I think this might be a system that actually suits him quite a lot. Braga are a decent side, though, and we can't really sleep on them. They're going to be a challenge, uh, and we owe them after last time. I think they did beat us, or at least draw with us. I don't think we beat them the last time we played them, hence we're given the option to give that team talk, I guess. Um, so I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on this as we talk about the questions. Um yeah, I'm, I'm a lot more eye testy, and I think that probably is detrimental to how I play Football Manager as well, that I base it a lot on what I see in games, and then it comes to sometimes... I think that would that actually explains a lot about the way I play the game, is that sometimes I'll see players do something in a previous game, which maybe we're not recording. I, 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 equally, it happens when we're recording, and I'll stick with the player throughout for the next few games, and it doesn't ever quite work out. Um, because Football Manager, generally, is based on the stats you're given, and there's not so much that natural element to the game um that i think i think that natural element to the game makes football this kind of goes back to the first question we had about um simulation or sort of real life and or a game and things like this um but yeah i prefer that and i guess the question is how important i think it is i think within football manager i think the analytics of the game are probably far more important um than than anything else as veltman we're gonna get a chance to break here because the free kick was so bad We've almost absolutely... I mean, we have screwed it up pretty horrifically. If they score from that, I mean, is that some of the worst football you've seen on Football Manager this year? I beg the question. That was pretty awful, wasn't it? I mean, let's just watch that back, just for my own... Veltman's clearance here is fine, but it hits a player, hits shown. We then lose it in horrific circumstances. We couldn't be more... I mean, that is an absolute abomination of defending. I mean, at, at any level... He's in so much space. I think we even appealed for offside there, which is a bit a bit, a bit brave, and um, quite an easy finish. Not too much. I feel like I can do about that necessarily, but I mean, maybe the passing system. Excuse me, I just have to cough because <coughs> I don't edit these. Usually, of course, that would leave. Um, oh, someone asked a really good question. Tom Collins asked, "What defines a good YouTube series for you?" Which is a really good question because the that's changed over years that i've been doing this um 
Really good question, though. What defines a good YouTube series for me? I think if by the end of the series, people will say they'll miss it, that's the sign of a good series for me. I think per from a personal perspective, if people are enjoying it and are engaging with it and liking it and things like this, because people, people often like... like that's actually something I, I think is quite important. People think now that the co to comment and like is just something YouTubers say, but I, I take it for, my, for, for, for far more than that. I think that... If you can engage an audience, like you guys that watch, right? I, I know this seems a bit meta to be talking so openly to you as Rygo are going to come forward again. It's a penalty, is it? <sighs> I'm, not in control, not in, I'm not in control. I'm just going to carry on with the question and enjoy myself. Um, but no, I, I think if people are engaged in the series and as we go through sort of the like comment conversation, it's very easy for, for people that watch now to think that YouTubers say that as part of just sort of the shtick of, of doing YouTube and it's just something YouTubers say and they actually, they actually don't care if you like or comment a video but I think if you're looking to improve and you and you create videos because you love doing it but at the same time you actively try to improve and I, I'd like to put myself in that category then it's so important to so like so you might not think if you miss like if you don't like a video once in like every five or something that oh it doesn't matter but from my perspective as someone that watches like i know that when a good video comes out there'll be more likes so obviously that is a good indication of when it's a good video so th like that to me is really important and if people are still liking videos like if i can do the if the if episode 10 has a similar amount of likes as episode 90 then for me it's a good series, and I'm that, that for me. I can kind of go. Do you know what people were engaged throughout? Maybe viewing numbers dropped off a little bit because it's it's hard for people to keep up with an episode uh, or a series with that many episodes, and that's fine. I mean, what are we even doing defensively here? It is just baffling. We're gonna. I think a change of system is very very close. I feel. Um, I mean, I'm gonna do it now. Actually, two 0 down. It, it's probably a bit late to do this, to be honest. But we're just gonna play that. And I know lots of people have played that before. Chelsea play a similar to this, a uh, similar system to this on the game. If you ever played with uh, with or against Chelsea, it's worked wonders. By the way, I mean, I need to sort of coordinate. We need a set piece episode. It won't be next episode either because it's PSV. But when we get, I mean, I don't know how much the ball winner makes, like how much difference. We've lost both games here, both games. Admittedly, I'm not concentrating massively and. There's probably more I could have done to solve these these issues, but I, don't, I feel a little lost, if I'm honest. I feel a little lost this year in the game, and I'm hoping this doesn't stand against me. We'll have the draw in a moment, by the way, for the next round of this competition. Jefferson there, just sliding thin air and, and winning the ball. Um, we'll do one more question before we carry on. Hopefully, we get... Um, Oh, here's a really good question. Johnny Hughes at Johnny Calcio said, what are your main priorities when it comes to picking a side for YouTube save? And I'm currently, I've currently got that problem right now that I don't know what my main save is going to be for YouTube. At this point, I'm just going to go and do Madden or something. Um, I just, that's just me not concentrating. Um, we're going to try and fix it quickly. The, ma the main criteria for me is that it can be a save that I think I can tell a good story with. And because I'm a story-based YouTuber, um, that to me is that I'm going to say you're unlucky. That I don't know if that's an improvement, really. Um, because I'm a story-based YouTuber, I think it's really important that the gameplay allows me to tell that story. And I'm not in control of that. And I've, I, But I really value the fact I'm not in control of it. I think it's nice. I've just realised now that the draw actually isn't until next episode, is it? No, it's not. So there we go. Well, I've I've conned you all in. But no, I'll, just, I'll finish up with the with the question though. I think it's really important to pick a team that I know will have some storyline, almost pre you watching. So you've got this idea of oh, I think this is going to be what it's going to be like, and then hopefully I can deliver that. I think the biggest example of that was probably Salford. If anyone watched the Salford story. That would be the example of people came into that series with a little bit of knowledge about the class of 92 and things like that. So you could play off those things. Whereas if there's nothing before it, then it's it can be a lot more difficult. And I think you see a lot of YouTubers do things they've done before because there can be links to that thing. And that that is really important from a creative standpoint. It's not so important from a technical standpoint. And if you're doing saves, we've, we've sort of been talking about sort of the, the, the two sides of Football Manager YouTube here and the way that it's delivered. Um, and I'm certainly on one side of that. So for me, 
it's far more important to be able to tell a good story than it is to necessarily have the success. But I hope that at some point during the series it all sort of comes together and works. Not always the case. C-A-B-C. <laughs> so I guess we're going to uh, end things there. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Again, people say they like these sort of podcasty episodes. You might not have even paid too much attention to the gameplay. I'm aware it's a complete playthrough, but that second game especially didn't mean all that much in my opinion. I mean, a little bit, but not really. Uh, next episode is huge, though. PSV, two games, either is Dutch Cup third round. I would much rather beat them in the Eredivisie. We have a situation at hand with the teams as well. We are six points behind PSV and a massive, holy smokes, nine points now behind Feyenoord. So there's plenty of work to do. Four games lost. You, those teams aren't the worst. I mean, they're not, they're, sort of, they're not the bottom six, so you can kind of accept it, but it's not ideal. And uh, hopefully we still get the time to turn it around. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, though, please do leave a like. It genuinely does help. And if you want to see some more, subscribe to the channel. We love with care. Until next time, goodbye. That, I've never said that before. That was weird.